Chapter 13 Cascading Selections Wall Data Standard targets to consistently fill metadata based on company rules and individual glossaries. In these regards, classification indexes or abbreviations are a common requirement for extended VDS configurations. Cascading pull down menus are popular user controls to navigate through hierarchically structured catalogs of terms, how to build interdependencies of user controls in VDS dialogs, and how to bind selection results with Vault user defined properties. Not all aspects of this chapter are new in our learning path. We touched everything in earlier lessons and exercises. But implementing cascading selections will challenge us in leveraging a lot more details on XML data sources, configuring user controls, and practicing PowerShell scripting. Workflow The enhanced VDS file dialog datasheet allows us to fill the property keywords by selecting the cascading classification pull-down lists. Each classification contains individual classification type members. The result of the selection copies an abbreviated key reflecting the classification structure to the keyword property value. Users can add the classification key while creating new files or editing existing files. Exercise Cascading selection for static properties in case you did not walk through chapter 7, exercise 1 and 2, we recommend doing this before you proceed here. Remember, we added rows to the grid of general properties and filled the cells with labels and different control types. Step 1. File dialog datasheet. Add new controls. Now we will add two more row definitions. Copy and paste two rows. It's always a good idea to sort our grid row numbers when we don't have a visual dialog designer. Let's change the row numbers 10 to 12. and insert two more labels and combo boxes for grid row 8 and 9. Here's how it looks on the datasheet in Vault Explorer. Step 2. Add the classification data source. Copy and paste the classification XML to vault.custom configuration folder. We have four classifications and below them we have different class types. Now we need to add the data source to our file XML right inside the window resources. The XPath attribute set as root allows us to access all classifications as a first level element. Step 3. Bind the primary combo box control to a data source. Bind the first combo box control of name classification to the source by adding the item source property and filter the text to be displayed to the name attribute. Step 4. Bind a secondary combo box to the primary control. The next pull-down list needs to read the subnodes of the first combo box's elements. We do this by binding its item source to the selected element of the control of name classification while displaying the type attribute. Step 5. Bind a user-defined property to the secondary control. 
The idea is to get the key value pasted into the keywords property. We can put this function in the selection changed event. In the Vault Explorer, click on New Stand File, find Keyword, select Classification and Class Type, and see the key being pushed to the Keywords property. Step 6 Enhance Usability. We can do some more to enhance our usability. First, let's create a tooltip. Copy and paste the property material and update it. Then we can set our class type label lean to the right and make its dropdown open automatically. The final review should look like this. Chapter 13 Summary While working on the details like interdependencies of controls, you might ask how to get the insights to discover the syntax. It is a valid question, and you can answer this only by using a Visual Studio Editor environment. Even though there is a free version available, the next question is whether you intend to invest the time and learning effort to get to this next level. If you do so, we recommend to check the resources on AKN how to use Visual Studio to edit data standard configuration environments on how to get tools and templates required and much more.